Hi, I'm Kevin and welcome to my channel. Today, once again, we're going back out to the forest with Malcolm Squires. This time we're gonna visit a site uh, with shallow soils that was harvested about 35 years ago. So Mac, you've brought us to a, a different site. Uh, this is a younger site. Yes, uh, this was a somewhat different condition. It's a site that uh, we were often criticized for cutting. It's a very shallow site. In fact, right where we're standing is bedrock right at the surface. There's no soil over it. Well, what you see is a cover of reindeer moss, and uh, that's, that's it. And uh, a few scattered needles falling off the jack pine and spruce trees that are surrounding us. In 1987, we decided that uh, we were going to see what we could do to rejuvenate this site back to something that would be more like a natural condition. So we uh, checked out all the options we had. We could have seeded it to jack pine, which was what nature would have done after a fire. In fact, the stand that was harvested here was one that had regenerated after fire. And uh, we had another option, which was to plant but how do you plant a tree on rock? Well, as you look around here, you can see that there are spots where there's a bit of soil and trees are now there. The trees are there because some of it is seed from the jack pine trees that fell on the ground after we harvested. And the black spruce trees that you see around, they are ones that <coughs> came from the, tr the seedlings that we planted. And we planted uh, little seedlings in paper pot containers. They didn't need much soil and uh, they rooted and the roots have spread out and got into the little bits of soil that are here. So what we're looking at here today is a stand of trees with small openings in it where there's no soil at all and the soil to me, the site I mean to me, looks almost exactly like a 30 year old stand following a fire on this condition this kind of ground would look like today. It's uh, so natural looking, I would say, it probably occurred after a fire. I can't see evidence of the trees that were felled and cut. I can't see stumps. All I can see is good, healthy looking living trees. That would be very much like what would have been here after a fire. And this was about 87? 87. So we're looking at what, 13, 20, about 33, 34 years old. Must be uh, rewarding to, to see your life's work he, show up like this. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, when you plant a tree, you don't often think you're going to be able to sit in that shade someday. But right. I've actually had the opportunity to sit in the shade of trees that just before they were going to be harvested, trees that grew naturally on the ground that I, when I was 22 years old, clear cut using my chainsaw. That was my job. So I clear cut the area and 50 years later I could sit down under the trees that were already big enough again that it's on the next harvest plan. Right on. That's, that's got to be rewarding. So I'm not 20 years old anymore. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> So what are some of the things that uh, a couple of foresters, when they get out in the forest, what are they, what are they looking at? What are they talking about? And we were just talking about uh, the, the form of the jack pine here. Uh, and I said they look natural. And you know what? It's the, uh, the fact that when you look at the tree, the, the bottom of the tree is, is sort of self uh, pruned. The branches have, have come off. And uh, these are fairly young trees. They're under 40 years of age. And that the crowns are are really pointed. Uh, we used to call that rocket ship pine. They're 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 still growing fairly vigorously, even though this isn't a great site. The the um, the soil is shallow, so there's not a lot of nutrients. The trees aren't growing as good as they could on another site, but they still have a vigorous form. They're still very pointed, and uh, so that's the kind of thing we're looking at. And we're we're looking at the uh, the tops of the trees to see how tall that top leader is, to see how how quickly the trees are growing. Um, so that's some of the things that uh, foresters look at when we're out in the forest talking to each other. One thing that I've been pleased to see uh, today and uh, this site and other sites that we've stopped at 
is the abundance of snowshoe hair evidence. I've seen their trails actually crisscrossing and uh, fresh tracks and a little bit of light snow that's still uh, persisting on some spots. And uh, in other trips out here, I, I make frequent trips to the area, I've seen ample evidence that Martin are occupying site. Well, why wouldn't they with a lot of snowshoe hares? Yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's become a very much a natural site again. Yeah. Yeah, another thing about this uh, site, and it's pretty well pertains to any area where black sprucers are growing. A red squirrel would enjoy this area. The black spruce trees have a lot of cones on the top, and if you were to look up at the tops of some of them, you'll see that they're missing some branches. That's because the red squirrel, to increase his ability to get the cones in the seed, has clipped off the branches that are heavily loaded with cones, letting them fall to the ground, and he accumulates them on a stump or a log or a rock, and he sits there and he chips them open and eats the seed in comfort. If he were up in the tree, he wouldn't be able to do that quite the same. He'd be dropping the cone all the time, but sitting on the ground, he can move it around any way he wishes. And quite often you'll see what I call red squirrel mindens, and it's where they've been accumulating the cones, and you'll quite often see them that might be as high as a foot deep of cone bracts. That's the coverings of the seeds and the cones. All right, guys, that's it for this site. Hopefully Malcolm and I will uh, find some time to get out and visit some other sites and talk about those. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget that Malcolm is a published author. He's got a book called Dynamic Forest. Uh, it is really worth a read if you're interested in forestry in Canada. And that's it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. As always, have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.